Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. In this video we're going to have a look at how we can use RevoScan to perfectly scan an object in 3D. I selected a cookie because it was a good excuse to buy some cookies. But you can see how fantastically this would work if you had some sort of website where you're selling items and you wanted people to be able to navigate around and look at the item from all angles. So for this I'm going to be using the Revo Point Pop 3. That's pretty irrelevant to the process, it's just the best scanner for scanning this size of object. Though you could easily use the Revo Point Inspire, which is the entry level scanner from Revo Point and I think is really really good value. It just doesn't have the LED flashing light that I really like if I wanted to add some texture which is capturing all the colour of an object. Then I'm going to set up the turntable which comes with the 3D scanner. I'm just going to make a little sort of back mount for it. I'm just going to use some blue tack to hold in place what would be a phone holder and then some blue tack at the front so that I can keep this object, which is going to be a cookie, in place relatively vertical. At this point we're ready to go. I haven't got any specific lighting set up, I've literally just got the curtains open in the room, but you could use some lighting if you really chose to. At this point we're going to come into the Revo Scan software and you can see we've got all of our other scan files that we've done previously. So now we just need to connect the scanner. For this we can just do it over Wi-Fi. I really like this as a feature. It means that I don't have cables trailing across the room and I'm just going to find the POP3 on there and connect to it. You can see on the software now that it's going to start connecting. So we've got that here. It always says that it's going to take about 30 seconds, but I find it generally takes a lot less than that. And then as soon as it's connected, we're going to click New Project. We can name this Cookie, and then I'm going to click New to start that new file. So this is what is going to show up as you start doing your scan. Now we haven't started scanning yet, but let's talk through the different bits of this software. In the middle, you've got the main scan screen, which is going to show you what's already been scanned. At this point, it's just showing the cookie because we haven't clicked start yet, and it's just sitting there. On the left hand side, you're going to have at the top your exposure settings, which you can change around. We'll have a look at that in a second. And then you've got the color camera, which is showing you what you're actually scanning in terms of the color. On the right hand side you've got your scanning distance, so at the moment we've got this on excellent. Anywhere between excellent and good is pretty much what you need. Too near or too far can cause some tracking issues and generally the Revo Point scanners have a really good range for this excellent and good. Some other scanner manufacturers I've found have quite a small window for this and it gets really tricky to keep everything scanning perfectly. Now because this is quite a wide object and it's rotating, we might go just into the too near bit a little bit, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem for this scanner. Then we've got our other settings over here. I generally keep my accuracy as high. Tracking is going to be feature because there's enough information or basically little divots and enough to the shape for this to work. If not, you'd use marker tracking and you'd have to put some markers on the object. We've got general object, dark object or face. This is going to be a general object. And I'm going to turn on my color scanning, which is going to activate my LED. And you can see how much firstly in the bottom left hand corner that lit up the cookie itself to get a nice rich color. That's something the Inspire can't do, but you can just set up your own lighting and that's fine. And then in the middle, you can now see that we've got this doing the color scanning as well. I'm not going to worry about the base removal or the scan distance. It's not something you generally need to be too concerned about. And if we go to instructions at the bottom, this will tell you what you're doing at each stage if you haven't used this before, which is a really nice feature that it's so there and accessible, as opposed to some other manufacturers which have software where you're going to have to go online to try and find out what you want. This will change as you go through the process. So I've just started the platform rotating and you can see the software automatically does quite a good job of ignoring anything that's black which is going to be useful for this scan. And obviously we can't see the back of the cookie, but that's not going to be a problem. So all I'm going to do is come to start and we'll start scanning. So let's go there and we've started the scanning process. Everything that's in green is what's currently being scanned. You can see we're getting a little bit close to the two near, but actually that was all right. And then it's going to scan each part of this cookie as it rotates round. Anything that's been previously scanned stays there as part of the color. So we know what we've already done. And I'm just going to let it go round so it's captured every part of this cookie that's going to be visible. And then I'm just going to click pause as soon as it's done. So we've got that there. Pretty happy with how this is going. You can see now that the middle is frozen, whereas the other cameras are showing where this is now moved to. And at this point, I'm perfectly happy with that scan of the cookie. So that's the very basics of this. Now, what we haven't done yet is gone through these other elements at the top. We will do that in a second. But at this point, I'm just going to click complete and I want to actually scan the other parts of the cookie so we can get these bits that are missing. One of the things that I often do for me personally is just scan parts of objects, 
because I'm just interested in those individual bits for making a 3D printable design. But in this, I want this to be the whole of the cookie, as if we we're going to bring this into, I don't know, like a game or something like that. So now that we've clicked complete, we've got that done. What I could have done is actually rotated this around and clicked resume, but that would have had some problems in this instance because I'm using this blue tack to hold up the cookie and the 3D scanner would get confused or the software would get confused because that blue tack would suddenly move it in relation to where it is. So what I don't want to do is keep scanning here. I want to set up an entirely new scan. So let's click new scan. I'll rotate the cookie around slightly so that we can capture some of the other edges that we didn't get. And let's just talk about some of the other settings here. Now, what I could do is fiddle around with the exposure. At the moment, you can see it's on auto. Let's just talk through that as a feature. Now, if I bring this too high, you can see we get this white and then red where we've got overexposure. So we don't want that. If you've got something that's too dark, it will turn blue. Now, at the moment, my lighting's pretty much perfect, so we're not getting any blue sections. But if you did, you'd want to crank that exposure up until this was perfect. But in this instance, this will do just great. I'm going to leave this on auto because it seems to be doing a great job, but you have got that customizability should you want it. So I'll just blitz through this really quickly. It's going to be exactly the same thing again. I'm just rotating the cookie around so that we're now getting the other side of it, which is mostly important for the black where our support is blocking out the bottom half of it. And then we'll do the scan again, exactly the same process starting on the back you can see that there's gonna be quite a lot of overlap and that is the most important bit about this scanning process. You generally want to have the cookie or whatever object it is so that you've got a decent amount of overlap with the other scans. That's how the RevoScan software is gonna work out where everything is meant to be in relation to each other. Again, this is a really thoughtless process. I don't really have to do anything with it. And as soon as I'm ready to go and I've got everything scanned, I'm gonna click complete. So for this scan, I'm gonna have done a total of three scans in all which should give me more than enough coverage for what I need. I might have been able to get away with just two, but because of the angle of the scanner, I'm not always getting the perfect top of the cookie, and I'm definitely not getting the bottom. So having a third scan where you've got this cookie on its side, so you're getting those top and bottom bits will now be on the sides, means that I'm going to have a complete scan. So at this point, we've got our three scans. We can see each of them and still click and look through each of them, in this model window, which shows us all of the different scans. Now, as I mentioned, it's very important that we have some overlap, but we don't want to cause the software any confusion. So what we're gonna do is go through and make each of these scans perfect and ready to go before we merge them together. Now to do that, we're gonna go and work along this top row here. And effectively, this is what you want to do in order. Some sections you're gonna miss out if you're not interested in doing them, and other sections you're gonna use. But effectively, start from the left and go to the right. Now we have got one option of what we call a one-click edit, which will do everything for us in one go. I'm going to avoid using that because I like to control what we're doing. There are other softwares out there that don't give you the option or as much detail as this. And I will say that may feel a little bit more beginner friendly for some people, but this is actually really easy to use. And without this level of customizability, you're really limited in what you can do with your scans. And that can be really frustrating. So we're gonna click on Fusion. And this is gonna give our options. They always come up on the right hand side and we're gonna set our point distance, the distance that we want each of these bits apart or each of these dots. So effectively, it's going to keep as many of the dots as it needs. And if there's too many dots, it might remove some. So what I'm going to do is put that as 0.3. And we want this to be the same every single time for each of our scans. It's going to give us a slightly better result. Or at least anecdotally, I've found that it gives a better result. Click Apply, and it's just going to process everything. This will be faster or slower depending on the size of your scan and how powerful your computer is. But for me, this generally takes way less than one minute. You can see now that we've got our scan and everything's looking pretty good. This is the point where I now start to remove the things I don't want. And in this instance, that's the blue tack. I don't want the blue tack showing on my cookie. So all I'm going to do is come to this on the right hand side where we can take things away and do other things like clip sections and whatever. Now, I generally pretty much only use the orbit, which is V, and then the lasso tool, which is U. So I'm just going to hit U, select that, delete and then select that bit there, delete, hit V to go back to this. You can see you get used to this very, very quickly, but we can just do this all over here. And if you want to do things to delete things in flat sections, you can do. I'm just gonna press escape to get rid of that. 
So now that we've done the fusion element, you can see there are some holes here. That's not gonna be a problem, so don't worry about it because we've got the other scans to fill those in, even that large one on the back. We're gonna to go to isolation and we're gonna detect. This is just gonna look for any points, for example, that one, where it seems to not really align with what we've been scanning. And there'll always be a few of those, and it's really good that the software can detect these and get rid of them, whereas in other softwares, you might have to find these manually. Let's click apply and then I'm going to click Overlap, and again, detect if there's any overlap. There's not likely to be a lot of overlap with this because it's a static object, but there might be a little bit. We've got two bits there. Click Apply, and I pretty much always do those processes. The next things we can do is we can smooth, if we want to have this much smoother and not as textured in terms of the actual shape, and we could simplify the mesh as well. I'm gonna do neither of those things. I want this to be as detailed as possible. And generally I scan things where I want that detail. But it's really nice that you've got those options there. If you're gonna be doing something, let's say for a game, where you don't want this high level of detail. I'd also suggest leaving these out if you are gonna be merging several scans together because you want those little individual details to help the scans align. And you'll see that in a minute. So with us missing out smooth and simplify intentionally, I'm gonna to go to mesh and we're going to click that and we have the option of what grid size we want. I'm going to just do four and again I'm going to do this the same for each of the three objects. Click apply and it's brought everything together in a basically final mesh. Once again I can do isolation just to check everything. I doubt there's going to be anything there so we've got no data found as expected. We could fill the holes if this was one scan and we had some small holes in it, we could fill the holes, which might be useful to do, but in this instance, I don't need to. But you can see we've got these options here where you can tell RevoScan if you want that to be filled in in a flat plane or curve to match the geometry of what's going on. And you can see if I detect this, you can see it detects the holes. And again, while some other software will do this all automatically, you can specifically pick the holes you want. So I could say I want to fill those two in, but not that big one before I apply it. You can also just click this button, which is going to select everything if you have lots of little holes, so that button there speeds things up. I don't want to actually do any of that, so I'm not gonna click apply, so let's click cancel. The final thing I need to do is apply the texture. I'm gonna stick as a color image, click apply, and this is just gonna process the color onto our mesh. And this is just gonna process all the color information and where it should be. And you can see how great this looks. It's just a 3D photograph at this point. It is so cool. I absolutely love this. I think it looks brilliant. You can see that then if this was only one item, we could then export this because we've got nothing else to merge because at the moment, these have not been processed in any way and we need to have meshes to combine them together. I'm not gonna export this because I want to bring everything else together. So what I am gonna do is just come back to our other object and we're just gonna do exactly the same process again. Now this is a bit repetitive, so I'm gonna just do this much faster. I'm doing exactly the same thing again at each stage, but I wanted you to see what I'm doing so nothing's being hidden. And if you want to slow this down, then you're very welcome to. I do hate those tutorials, especially painting tutorials, where they sort of jump five stages saying, I just did this off camera. So hopefully this means that you can see everything I've done and you know that I'm not actually adding anything to this or doing anything in the background in secret. It does just work perfectly fine. I should point out that I can actually just use the isolation to get rid of the blue sack at the back because it's not really connected to the rest of the mesh. That's because we used a black object to be our stand, so that makes this relatively easy to do. Whereas we're still gonna have to do the same thing with our blue tack and actually just get rid of that where it's connected to our mesh. And then we'll just continue the process as I've gone through previously. Now as we go through, RevoScan is saving this. So we've got each of our three objects on the side here and we can go from one to the other as much as we need to and it is saving it each time. If I did want to come back and change anything, for example, like fill holes, it will give you a warning once you start doing it that you're gonna undo some of the previous things. For example, if I came back to mesh and decided I want to change the grid size I was doing it, this will basically remove what you've done for this object for each stage to the right. So as I said, you want to go from left to right. Now what we're gonna to want to do is merge several of these objects together because, well, we've got these massive gaping holes. So let's go to merge. Now all we need to do is come to the left-hand side and select which objects we want to merge together. So I want to use all three, 
and at the moment you can see that this looks like it's going to be absolutely trash. That's because these are all oriented. The scanner itself has an orientation system so it can work out which way up it is and you can see that we've got those the way up they were scanned and that isn't a concern. What we're going to do is come to our merge function again on the right hand side. I do like the way this software is really consistent with where you have to go for everything. We've got this working off features, not markers because we don't have any markers on the object and then I'm going to click preview alignment and it's going to try and work out where everything should be. And now we've got our cookie looking much, much better. Everything has been put in place and you can see this has done a really good job with all of those different colours overlapping pretty much perfectly and we haven't got any gaps to worry about. And where we do have a gap, say for example there was a gap here, we can see that the purple colour is filling in, so that scan 2 is filling in where that gap was for scan 1 in the pink and scan 3 in the yellow. So I really like this preview mode, I think it's very clear on what we've got. Once we've done that we're going to click generate model and it's going to start generating our mesh from those three scans. And we've now got this merged object. Now the one thing I want to highlight with this is at this point this has basically gone back to being similar to a point cloud. You can see all the point clouds there, it's just combined everything together. So we need to go through this process one more time. We're going to and you can tell that because of the iconography, this is not a mesh. So let's fusion this together. And for some reason it goes back to one of the other scans. So I'm going to click on the merge. And it's going to work out what we want. And we're just going to go to isolation again. Let's detect and apply that. Overlap, I find this one very important. It's going to be less likely to be a problem on this cookie. But if you're scanning something that's organic and might have moved slightly, this is more likely to detect little errors and changes and you can still see there are some really minuscule ones here but just because no scanner is perfect so as detailed as these scanners can be you'll always have a little bit and it's worth applying that as well. We're not going to smooth though if I wanted to smooth this object this would be the stage I'd do it. I wouldn't have smoothed all of the individual meshes I'd smooth it at this endpoint. We're not going to simplify it either. Let's go to mesh, apply that Everything's perfect, we shouldn't have any holes. Oh, we do have a slight hole. So let's have a look at our hole filling. So I'm gonna go to hole fill, detect our hole. There are some minor holes here, just where we had a slight indent. Let's select all of those holes to be filled. I want it to be curved, we'll click apply, and we've got those filled, and it has worked out what we want to do in terms of the texturing from the area around it. Really great software. I don't want to smooth or simplify this again. I do want to texture it, so let's apply that texture. This might take slightly longer because we're combining a lot of textures that have overlapped together, so it needs to process this in a slightly more complex way, I imagine. I'm not an expert at this, but I still think it's pretty fast. I'm not actually speeding any of this up at this point, so I think this estimate of two minutes is a little bit over the top. And we can see now that we've got this perfect cookie. Those lines that sort of were on the back before are pretty much gone, so that seems to have done really well. And we've got everything, I mean, I think this looks absolutely great. Like I said, it's just a 3D photograph at this point. If this is something you wanted to put on a website, I mean, this is a really good way to do it. Like, if you had something that you were selling and you wanted people to be able to just navigate around and have a look what it looked like, I mean, I don't think you're going to get better than that. I think this looks absolutely perfect. So hopefully that's given you a good example of the results you can get and the workflow that I would use when using the RevoScan software. The RevoScan software is entirely free and I think the scanners are very reasonably priced for the absolute great quality that they provide. If you are interested in any RevoPoint 3D scanners, there's a link in the description to all the videos where I cover 3D scanners and there are also affiliate links for the 3D scanners they sell as well in the description as well as any of the latest discount codes that I've been sent. If you do use any of those links then I do get a slight bit of money which really helps the channel and allows me to keep making these videos. So that's always hugely appreciated. Have a great day guys.